Spurs do play Bournemouth on Sunday, 2 p.m. Um, on what is set to be a very, very tricky game for Spurs, especially off the back of that really damaging defeat. It's going to be really difficult to turn our fortunes around against a Bournemouth side. Bang in form at the moment. Seven wins out of their last nine games so far in the Premier League. Ira Orla um, ha- is right now producing the probably the form team in the Premier League, which is uh, crazy to think about considering he was on the brink of being sacked near the beginning of the season. You look at the form on the, on the table, right, uh, on the screen right now, sorry. Last five games, um, they've won four, drawn one. They're in outstanding form. Look at that goals conceded as well. Four goals conceded, 13 scores. Mm -hmm. Um, you know away from home look at that four consecutive wins away from home and they do travel to the Tottenham Stadium obviously on Sunday Um, sounds familiar though doesn't it yeah exactly the form that Everton were in when they came to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium so look we had a bad result against Brighton but I'm choosing as ever to try and remain positive and I think I'm not suggesting it's going to be an easy game by any means but I think hopefully we should have enough in those forward areas uh, especially if Son can be not injured. I'm a bit worried about his injury Mm. uh, to score some goals past them. Everton hadn't conceded a a goal in like 400 minutes or something scored by the opposition. And we scored two in the first 20 minutes. We need that atmosphere to be big. We need to get behind the team, get us a couple of early goals and then be able to play our football. Yeah. And I hope home advantage really makes a big difference because I think even though we did go through that period, didn't we? We lost three consecutive home games. I do think at home we just look a bit that bit more intense and aggressive, don't we? I feel. And we didn't when deserve we to lose any of those home games either. We played pretty well, I thought. Yeah, and we we do have that air of dominance. I feel like away from home. I think we do. Um, I'm not saying we're we're bad, but I don't think we have that control of games, uh, which I feel which we do um, at home. We do seem to be create more chances. We do seem to get on top of teams a lot more. And even though okay, you know, on those occasions we haven't been getting results, you know, we showed against Newcastle. Um, we you know we we do we can be very very intense. Albeit Everton definitely should have probably come away with something in our last home game. Mm-hmm. And they, they, you know, they came into that game in great form and they were really unlucky not to take away something. I think home advantage hopefully should be crucial um, in this game against Bournemouth. And even though Bournemouth have won their last four games, I mean, I'll, I'll look at their, the, the games they have won. I don't think they're going to have as big a challenge as, as us. Uh, yeah, and, and it's only human nature that teams, when they're faced with 60,000 opposition fans, are not going to be able to play as progressively as they are when they're in front of their own fans. Bournemouth will try and they'll come at us and and try and play their football and that will leave gaps for us to play into too short. They're going to make chances. Again, every Spurs game I go into, I I say, you know, bet on plus two and a half goals, (laughs) bet on both teams to score. It's an absolute given. I'd say the same thing against Bournemouth and um, I think there'll be goals. There'll be lots of chances. It'll be fun. It's New Year's Eve. What's not to love about it? But I fancy us. I think last night's result will, will... result in a bit of a bounce back hopefully that last 10 minutes made the the players kind of get a bit bit more kind of almost like a bit more in their legs than they would have had if we'd Mm. lost 4-0 and um i still think even though we're decimated by injuries i still think we've got enough on that pitch to cause them loads and loads of trouble and um i don't know yeah bournemouth been on a great run but do i feel like their squad is full of players who let's say if they went one or two nil down could fight back in the way everton did i think everton have a bit more experience about them to be honest and um so I'm hopeful that if we can get the first goal, and that was the first time we conceded the first goal in a long long while last night. Mm. Hopefully if we can get the first goal, really put them under some pressure and make it a really happy new year going into then that Burnley game, cup game in the early new year. On the Friday night, yeah, I 100% agree with that. If you look back to, obviously this is the first time as well we're going to have played a team twice, or the, uh, play a team again after facing them in the first All half right, of the yeah. season. Um so we played Bournemouth, um, obviously, earlier in the season. We did win 2-0. Uh, I think it was goals from James Madison and Kulisevsky. It was a really nice, comfortable victory away at Bournemouth. But um, that was that was in August. Obviously, it's two very different... Uh, it feels like two very different teams at this point now because, obviously, we've got all those injuries. Yep. Uh, we've, we're a completely different outfit at this point, even though we were very good at that point. Ira Orla, as well, has um, had a lot more time with his team. They look a completely different outfit. So in terms of when you look back at that 2-0 victory we had in August... Can you take too much? Um, can you learn too much from that game? Go, like going into this game, or is it? Do you have to think of it as a completely different outfit? Yeah, no, I don't know if you can take too much from it. To be honest, I, you know, we were absolutely banging our good period with our first eleven absolutely nailed down, and um, they were just kind of classically trying to get to grips with a real change of style, similarly to how we had to do. I'd say the main difference is 
our players are better players in terms of their ability to take on the coaching and the style quicker. It's taken Bournemouth's squad a bit longer, but they are definitely a big threat. I really like that player, Semenyo, who I think I've seen him tending to play on the left, but they probably switch around mm. a little bit. He's really, really dangerous. And obviously Solanke's in great form. So yeah, not too much that we can learn from that. It says Lloyd Kelly's injured, which is a good one for the script because it would be classic in the time, in the ways that script are written against Spurs sometimes for Lloyd Kelly, who we've been interested in buying for a, a transfer window or two uh, to score against us. So I'm pleased about that. But we, and we'll be saying, we need to take the game by the scruff of the neck, make sure we're the team dominating, make sure that it's other people talking about us. How do they stop us? That's the important part. Make sure that we're the team on the front foot, make chances. We've got players in good uh, uh, form for scoring and assisting goals in Richarlison and Son. Uh, Poro's making a lot of assists, as, we, as we've talked about. And um, yeah, I just see no reason why on a big day like that, with the fans really up for it, we can't go and get another three points and put more pressure on those teams above us. Yeah, touching on Dominic Solanke, obviously 13 Premier League goals for him this season is obviously his real breakout season when it comes to goal scoring form in the Premier League. Um, he's being much talked about, even a potential outside shot of making the Euros come come the summer. He's been um, in. He's been talked about as a potential move to a, one of the top six teams as well. Um, you, we saw how much joy Jao Pedro got out of our backline um, on Sun on. Um, Last night, uh, with you know Emerson and Davis really struggling to contain him, is that something that you just you know we have to be worried about going into Sunday? I think one thing I'd say is Solanke's a bit more of a physical presence. So if there's one thing that may, might make me wonder whether he'd be tempted to bring Eric Dyer back into that back four, it might be that you know some crosses coming in. Solanke's very good in the air in his hat trick the other week. He scored two great headed mm. goals. I think Jao Pedro was very good on the floor and, and giving us a lot of trouble kind of in terms of his mobility and ability to um, hold the ball up, but also get around the outside and, and make piercing runs. So he might be tempted to do that with Dyer, but my, my instinct is that with Dyer, he said to him, you're not part of my plans. You can find yourself another club. And really what it's a matter of is with, I think from everything I hear, um, Maybe Dyer wants to go back to Sporting Lisbon mm. and Sporting Lisbon don't want to pay a fee because they know they can get him in six months time. So it's whether Dyer can negotiate something with Levy to get away early for kind of a nominal fee. So with that in mind against Solanke, yeah, I think if it is Royale and Dyer, he will cause them trouble with his physicality. He's on a great run of form in terms of his finishing. So if he gets chances, I'd fancy him to put them away. But we've got to make sure we've got to, we do better at stopping crosses from coming in and closing down players not just when it comes to crosses but long shots as well we saw it with that goal in the top corner you don't put in that, that in the top corner if someone properly closes you down it was like they looked at a stupid and they were like you haven't got it in your locker to do that and he proved that he does and at top level if players are given that much space they have a one in ten chance of putting it in the top corner like that so we need to learn from that be closing down players be pressing players and be at a hundred percent because we need to get as many points as we can between now and when our players get back at the end of January, which I, I look at as the kind of the max length of time before we have hopefully a full squad to choose from. Yeah, looking at that um, lineup there from Bournemouth, which uh, I think is the one that they've been playing for the majority of their, you know, one. Someone in the comments actually correct me saying they've won eight of their last ten, apparently, not seven of uh, seven of nine, which okay. is incredible form, absolutely yeah. incredible form. We've got to give them so much credit. One player I also want to talk about is. Um, Alex Scott there in centre mid. He's a player who was heavily linked with Tottenham in the summer. We didn't obviously push the button on him, and uh, we allowed him to go to to Bournemouth. They signed him for a Bristol decent. City, right? That's correct. He was a he's a boyhood Tottenham fan. Yeah. Um, he had I think he was one of the players of the season last year in the Championship. Um, he has been injured for the majority of the season, but has recently come back into the team following his return from injury. Um, I don't know if you saw against Fulham, he got one of the assists of the season. I felt dribbling past two or three players and setting up uh, Clive uh, for, for his goal um, is he one you're kind of disappointed we've missed out on is he you know being a boyhood Tottenham fan as well uh, the, you know obviously there are question marks when you're in the championship can you make that step up but he really does seem to be performing very well at the moment in the Premier League yeah well, I should say it doesn't kind of maybe it's not so surprising then that they've really improved since he has come into the team because he was injured when he signed mm. and so he missed the first kind of maybe six seven eight games of the season uh, big talent I think possibly Spurs have been burnt a little bit buying young players straight from the championship in the last five years. And I'm thinking of Spence and Rodon specifically. Whereas 
let's say, go back to 15 years ago when we were buying players from the championship specifically uh, and younger players because they'll have sell-on clauses. We did really well out of that. I think now we're in a position, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but we're in a position where maybe we look at someone like Scott and we say, well, why don't you move to a lower level Premier League team first? We'll keep our eyes on you. A bit like what happened with Madison back in the day as well. We were linked with him back when he was at Coventry and at Norwich. And we let him kind of get his move to the Premier League and prove himself. And then we'll spend the money on him when he's kind mm. of more in his prime. So it wouldn't surprise me, and you can call me on this, wouldn't surprise me if maybe in three, two, three, four years time, Scott came to Tottenham Hotspur. Big fan of the club, a Spurs mm. player for sure, and would suit Ange Ball. But I don't think they looked at him and thought he's going to get straight into the first 11. And so they weren't willing to pay. What did that? What did they end up paying? Ball? 25 million. 25 million quid. So there you go. Yeah, and I think as well, he, he might have been injured at the time as well. So maybe that played into their thinking, you know, he's only just become fit in recent weeks. So he would have been unavailable for a lot of the season as well. What did we pay for Benton for? We you paid know. like 20 million. So it would have been let so, more than so one. So it's like, that. you know, they are going to be more likely to spend that money on a player who is an, a, a Uruguayan international um, playing at Juventus than they are a player who's never played in the in the English top top flight and mm. that to me is a perfect example of the English player tax and the English club to English club tax you're paying an absolute premium it's far less of a risk for a Bournemouth because they can bed him in he can become a main man at their club almost straight away and they feel pretty confident they'll get a sell on they'll end up selling him for more than 50 million for sure in terms of the narrative of just Bournemouth season obviously they uh, sacked Gary O'Neill quite unexpectedly at the end of last season mm -hmm. then Ira Orla comes in he he goes winless for the first nine games and Gary Neal seems to be doing a good job at Wolves. It does see, it did seem at the time, or was it a mistake to sack Gary Neal and bring in Ira Ola? What, what, why did we do that? Essentially, that's what a lot of Bournemouth fans were saying at the time. But he has really turned things around recently. Yes. They're now up to, you know, pushing the top half uh, level on points, I think, with Wolves and Gary Neal's Wolves at the moment. Do you think they're better now than they were last season under Gary Neal? Hard to say, to be mm. honest. I think they're trying to play... Uh, probably a more expansive game but what I'd say is these runs can happen and then in the same way you can get an injury or two have a bit of bad luck and you can be on a run of 10 winless games as well so the, the only reason I'm bringing that up is because those narratives can change so quickly and they're mostly led by you know Sky Sports to be honest a lot <laughs> of the time and I remember specifically you know they did an interview with Bournemouth chairman the American guy um, on the pitch side at one of their early games and they were, they basically were alluding to the fact, you know, you've taken a big risk sacking Gary O'Neill, he's doing great at Wolves, how do you feel about it? And he was like, look, you know, we just got a feeling that this guy who we're bringing in as manager is going to lead us to a better place in the longer term. And fair play to them. They've got the courage of their convictions. They stuck by and through a difficult start when the narrative was always already beginning to say, oh, you've made a mistake and you're going to get relegated. And now they're playing some good stuff. But it can turn very quickly and it could turn very quickly for Gary O'Neill at Wolves as well. But I was very impressed with O'Neill at Wolves uh, from, sorry, Gary O'Neill when he was on Sky Sports talking mm. about how he trains Wolves specifically for each game. And, um, you know, all the managers are doing that, but he's just gone out in the press and actually said it to camera. So they're both obviously very talented managers, but I couldn't say for sure that they're in a better place because he, he might have taken them to this situation as well. All right. So having said all that, um, going into Sunday, what is your score prediction for Bournemouth at home? 3-1 Spurs. 3-1 Spurs. I'm, I just, I do really see us struggling to win this one just because Bournemouth had that little bit extra day's rest. They're in great form. I really see them come, coming in confident mood uh, to the Tottenham Stadium. I do think home advantage does make a difference. Mm -hmm. I just looked at our performance on, on um, Thursday night. We do seem to be lacking in a bit of form and fitness. I actually think, I actually wouldn't be surprised if we come out a bit comp like come out flying out the traps a bit yeah. maybe take the lead but I, I just got a feeling as the game goes on Bournemouth might start to take control of this game and I will, will we have the energy to counteract that as the game goes on yes I do see us struggling <laughs> you think we will I, I, I hope Don't we will I hope I'm wrong against it because you said a draw for last night I know we, we lost. lost it's your fault <laughs> so it's, it's, it's your fault I am going to say 2 2. That is my, that is why I reckon. You said that before. I know, I know, I know. And look, I did predict us to struggle. We did struggle. That is, that, that is what I'm, I'm thinking. But I hope the players aren't watching. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know say. if you saw this, but <laughs> in one of the watch alongs with um, Marlon, uh, it was Everton. They got a corner, 
And he said, I've got a bad feeling about this. And then they scored. <laughs> and I said, you, and I had to go, you are now not allowed to say you have a bad feeling about anything ever again. He, he did, says that from every He corner. didn't say he had a bad feeling <laughs> ever again, and we didn't concede again. So, <laughs> All right. you know, I'm 100%. I'm 100% right at this point. All right, that's that's a probably a good way of going about it. So maybe I'll, that's a food for thought. To be fair, though, I literally predict Spurs to win most games, and it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, people usually call me deluded. For I go, you know, oh, we're winning the Etihad, no problem. We're winning, we're winning the Emirates, and then I'm pretty deluded. So. Um, I am predicting 2-2, though. I do see a bit of a struggle, but I hope I'm wrong. I think we do have the quality to beat Bournemouth with that team we have there. I think we're just really struggling on empty. I don't think this... I'm not saying we're going to draw and this is like going to be a, um, a symptomatic of like our results or form going forward. I just think we're going through a very tough period at the moment. And yeah. I know we got those three wins, but even in those wins, you know, I think we perform better in games that we lost in than some of the wins that we've had. It's just funny how things work sometimes with um, with Spurs and and with football in general. But I'm going with the two two draw. Let me know in the comment section below your prediction. You've for actually got a comment from game. the Southview Coys boys saying, "Except Brighton at home last season, Sim." Uh, well, they're obviously listening in about the superstition stuff no fair enough <laughs> uh, I, I think I predicted us to lose that game because uh, we were on terrible form we ended up just about winning uh, but we deserve to lose that game that's for sure um, Keith Ryan says Sim low every game last season you said we would win and Conte is the best thing ever to happen to Spurs well you can't be right on everything can you no I uh, thought I, I admit I hold my hands up I, when Conte came I thought I thought he was exactly what we needed and for a while I was willing to put up with the dross but in hindsight no <laughs> 